Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good one between the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor at M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Buffalo Bills. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. They'll yeah, bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. We get set to see Buffalo on offense for the first time. A lot of fans wondering going into week one, who's going to be the starting quarterback in Buffalo? Lots of twists and turns in that race, three-man race. So let me ask General Manager Charles Davis, what, what do you assess right now? What's going on in that position? Oh, well, a lot. A lot is going on. Because remember, they signed A.J. McCarron as a free agent from Cincinnati, and he has experience as a starter in the league and a playoff game, one that they practically won. He played pretty well in it. Then they have Nathan Peterman, who they drafted last year. Had a disastrous half against the Chargers where he threw five interceptions, but he's a tough-minded, mature individual. And, of course, they moved up in the draft this year and drafted Josh Allen out of uh, Wyoming at number seven. All three of them have shown flashes. I think when the season begins, it's much more concerned about can the offensive line protect their quarterback, whoever it is, I expect it to come down to either Peterman or Allen to start the season. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. They'll go again to McCoy. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers of reading the play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Certainly not the start they were looking for here as they come up on a third and 14. Hurry up, here we go. Three, 19. Ah! Out of the gun, Peterman. And some room to work. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. First down carry here for McCoy. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident.
Here's Chris Ivory with his first carry. And unable to get downhill there, so he'll take this up to about the 37. Tackle made there by Tony Jefferson. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. The number one asset for a pass rusher, his legs. And even in his mid-30s, Terrell Suggs has his firmly underneath him. Last season, 11 sacks, his seventh year of double-digit sacks. Still has all the pass rush moves in his arsenal and can continue to bull rush people in order to get quarterbacks on the ground. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. Hurry up, here we go. Blue line, ah! From the gun, it's Peterman. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? They'll throw on first down with Peterman. It's complete to Jeremy Curley. And he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. another first down that's his longest run of the first quarter and Charles we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game they'll be looking for more there and they got to the perimeter so that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today so they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside but it appears that when they want the big yardage they think they can get to the outside and make it happen Now a play fake here on first down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Set, blue, landed. Ah. Second down, Peterman. And it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time. And it's third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. They'll try to capitalize on play number 11 of this opening drive. Third and goal. Now let's go! Ah! From the shotgun, Peterman. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills' opening drive yields three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. 
bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that? Come on, what does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And yeah, not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. It's Joe Flacco leading him out, the leading passer in Raven franchise history in his 11th season now out of Delaware. Throughout his career, he's been tough, hard-nosed, and certainly durable. Only six starts missed in his first 10 seasons and played 16 games nine times. But for the first time in his career, a little competition headed his way with first-round pick Lamar Jackson from Louisville set to contest for the number one job. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They look to throw on first and 10 to Flacco. And that is incomplete here. And the Buffet boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's carry number one for Kenneth Dixon. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. Carrying one deep for Crabtree. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep here, Marcus Murphy. Here's Murphy. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get free, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Peterman and the Bills come up now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Now, three and 19. Hot, three and 19. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Now 
Peterman on second down. Looking for his tight end play, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the longtime charger, Eric Weddle. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Clay, the intended receiver. Eric Weddle is one of my favorite players in the league, Brandon. A guy that always seems to be in the right place at the right time, making a play on the football. And he has excellent hands, as we just saw there. now they get set to head back on the field they punted last time they had it what steps Charles do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again well let's just go to the football 101 the trade expression 101 win first down make five six seven yards on first down and make it a second and three second and manageable keep accumulating first downs that way keep moving the football don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage They get the pick. Now what can Flacco do on first down? Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Michael Crabtree, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Quickly now, a look at the Buffalo defense. I'm expanding my focus here because I want to look at two guys. I want to look at the safety duo of Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. Poyer plays the free safety. He roams in the middle of the field. Micah Hyde, close to the line of scrimmage, makes a lot of plays on the football in the running game. But both of them had five interceptions in 2017, and Micah Hyde went to his first Pro Bowl. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Four down, four down. Ready, ready, ready. Here's the first carry for Alex Collins. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Operating off play action. Flacco. Rush coming and he's taken down. Star Latulale. In there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. Well, getting to the quarterback, that's an area Buffalo really wants to improve this season. Hard to believe they went to the playoffs last year. Just 27 sacks on the season. Would that rank in the league? 29th Tied for 29th. Tied yeah. for 29th. If they want to get back to the playoffs, they'll have to up that number deep into the 30s. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. Here comes Nathan Peterman out for his next drive. He's probably feeling like he dodged a little bit of a bullet through the interception on the last drive and then the missed field goal, so no points. Not only did he dodge the bullet, he can go back out there and flourish now. And I'll guarantee this, one of the leaders on the defense came off the field and told him, don't worry about it. You noticed? We got you. Right, they try the 50-yarder and miss it, and now this offense has it first and 10 at the 40. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Caught by Jones. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Here we go now. Ah! On second down, here's Peterman. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Though he's seen some good pressure defensively already here in the first quarter, here's another good example.
The Bills on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Hurry up, here we go. Ah! Peterman. They're able to find Curley. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 15 yards that time and a Buffalo first. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. teammate comes along and scoops it up almost like it's almost like baseball guys at bat people are on base in scoring position one guy doesn't get them home the next guy comes through and picks him up and avoids the turnover second down and that was a good run this is only one of nine guys to go over a thousand yards in 2017 and i think you can't let him run wild here well you think 100 yards the measuring stick always that is the threshold you want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense now let's go Three, nine, now it's peterman toward the center of the field but it's incomplete they were looking to get it to kelvin benjamin there third down here they always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You can't be able to lose your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. The Bills on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. To throw is Peterman. Over the middle and caught by the tight end, Clay. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. First trip to the red zone for the Bills. They come up first and ten at the 16. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Peterman. His throw caught at about the five. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Let's go! 319! 
after the penalty, it's McCoy. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Second down, it's McCoy. And it just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. Peterman to throw. Going to drop this off to McCoy. Complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that will make it 6 to nothing. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, get closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They'll begin the drive with Collins. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Second down, Flacco to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And it's third down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And this one is incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Here's Sam Cook now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> so a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Zay Jones was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, you know, Charles, just thinking back, it was around this time a year ago, Hurricane Harvey was devastating the Houston area and other areas there in southeast Texas. One year later, though, J.J. Watt's foundation announced it had raised and given $41.6 million in the last calendar year. That's phenomenal. And he was the NFL Man of the Year last season, and rightly so for what he did. And if I'm not incorrect, his goal when he started this to help all the people was $200,000. 41.6 million minus 200,000. That's a pretty good margin there. That's a heck of a margin. Congratulations to J.J. Watt, his foundation, and to everyone who contributed to help out the people in Houston. Charles, I think sometimes maybe we take LaShawn McCoy for granted. Been in the league since 2009. He's played 12 or more games every season as a running back. 30 years old this year. What do you see for his future? I still see a very bright future for him, and you're exactly right. We do kind of take him for granted. Remember, he was with Philadelphia. Then he goes to Buffalo. Buffalo goes through the playoff drought before last season, and the Eagles, they win a Super Bowl without him. So, yeah, we forget just how special he is, but I do think with his running style, he's got many more seasons left. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. From this vantage point, they've got the lead here. So for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and pump the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. So on fourth down, as seen on TV, here's their resident strongman, John Ryan, on the punt. Discuss Michael Crabtree looking down at the stats here realizing he has no catches they targeted him twice but no catches so how do they get him more involved Charles you make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game you just try and find ways to get him going and it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield maybe kind of like in basketball just a shooter seeing the ball go through you get him a rep Get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy look. And to this point, no catches. Flacco. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. That'll bring up second down. As we inch closer to the regular season, I'm just peering down at some of the preseason records. Right now, Ravens 4-0, Bengals, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I guess my question is, what stock do you put in these preseason records? You know, the easy answer is nothing, because <laughs> the preseason doesn't really matter. But some organizations do put more stock in it than others. Some of them want to win every preseason game. Others don't worry about that at all. Intel has told me that only one team has won the Super Bowl after going 0-4 in the preseason, and that was in a strike year, I believe, when Washington did it. So for the most part, you just don't want to go winless in the preseason. But remember this, 
the Browns and the Lions both went 4-0 preseasons, then they went 0-16 in the regular season. Speaking of winless teams, Eagles and Falcons both winless right now. Could be Super Bowl contenders. I still think that they're going to be, whether they go winless or not. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And down he'll go at the 25. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Oh, what a move. That'll be a 47-yard punt officially, five on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and ten. And now out come the Bills. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Peterman and the Bills come up now with a first and 10 right at the 30. <laughs> now Peterman on first down. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action now. Peterman. And Jones has it over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 17 on that one and a Bills first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one. Throwing now, Peterman on first down. Man up the right side, it's the tight end play. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. This give is to McCoy. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Keep it on the ground with McCord. Got some real estate inside the 30. And finally taken down at the 20-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league.
From the red zone now, here's Peterman on first down. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Jeremy Curley, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Bills will add on to their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The drive starts with a run by Collins, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. The tackle is made by Micah Hyde. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. On second down, Collins. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Third down, Flacco from the gun. Oh, he's got him in wide open, complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. down run with Collins and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 more on that one and another first down. And yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going.
So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 44-yard line. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking deep downfield. And this is taken in at the 5. And he takes it all the way down to the 3. Flacco finding Crabtree for a big one. 41 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Setting up to throw Flacco. And they'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Nick Boyle from three yards out. And the Ravens draw a bit closer. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 13 to seven. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Chris Ivory again gearing up to help lead this offense. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Peterman and the Bills come up now with a first and 10 at their own 23. First and ten, it's Peterman. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. And down he'll go at the 25. The completion good for three, and it's second down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Let's go! 319! 319! They snap it at one. Now it's Peterman. And nowhere to turn for Peterman as he hits the turf. Man, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use your aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 16. 
Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we man things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm Brandon Garner. The Bills on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 16. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it up here this time in the 21. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical, or they want to take the big strike and go after it right now. First and 10 here for Flacco. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. But with the incompletion there, gives us time to hit on the retirement. Charles of Eric Decker. First played for the Broncos, Jets, and Titans. Was with the Patriots this preseason, but now he's going to step aside. I think he had a fantastic career because look at it this way. Getting 1,000 yards in one season for a receiver... That's a career for most people. He did it three times. Best year in Denver in 2013. 87 catches, almost 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns. Congratulations on a wonderful career, Eric Decker. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call a timeout. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and ten. Flacco from the gun. And he finds Kenneth Dixon. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. First down, Flacco, and his throw is incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Second and ten. Flacco once more. Over the middle here to Brown. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? Holding offense. And they were looking to throw. Holding on a big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. 
You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. Usually going to pick up a holding call. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. And again, it's Flacco to throw. Caught by Snead over the middle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Once more, it's Flacco. That's caught out left by Perriman. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Here comes LaShawn McCoy as he trots back out there now. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. coming at you and you change the blocking schemes maybe you go to max protection the biggest ones maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean but in that case that didn't happen zero accountability and a sack resulted now following the sack they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. and this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half so we've reached halftime with the visiting Bills taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Now White on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. This is Collins on the handoff. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Now that's a gain of six on the first down run. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Come up now on a second and long after the hold. On the draw, Flacco to Dixon. And able to find a little space. He gets this up over the 15 to the 16. Give him six on the run. It'll be third down now with still a long way to go to get to the first down marker. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Third and long for Joe Flacco. Brought in left side by Sneed. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Murphy now to return. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here's the Bills offense now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. 
Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. All right, here we go. Ah! On second down, here's Peterman. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. But well, we always talk about how you got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, did he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. The Bills on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and three. Hurry up, here we go. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. C.J. Mosley in on the stop. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Here we go now. 319. Now Peterman on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Here we go now. Three, 19. And the blitz does come. Going deep for Benjamin. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 13. Now Collins. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him done. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Yes! On first, they go right back to Collins. And he powers his way up past the 30. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down, it's Dixon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. That he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's gonna take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. The Ravens on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and five. Now Flacco. And that is incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Cook now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. comes Nathan Peterman out for his next drive. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win. Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. They'll throw on first down with Peterman. He finds McCoy. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack is a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. Now let's go. Boom, let's go. Second down, Peterman. Over the middle and caught by the tight end play. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Fifth catch of the afternoon and that gives him a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Peterman now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. They go down to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And a penalty flagged down as he gets only about a yard. Now let's listen in on the call. Holding offense. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. Now let's go! 319! 319! Peterman. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll go 
third down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. All right, here we go. To throw again is Peterman. His throw incomplete. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas, and that'll make it third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Bills on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and 11. Now they'll throw it with Peterman. And this is going to be incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's John Ryan now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at the 20. Hey, hey, on that. Yes. They'll run the counter with Collins. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Yeah, and the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. The Ravens on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for it with Collins. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. A lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. to the 33. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Peterman of the Bills come up now with a first and 10 at their own 11. Hey, hey, hey. Ah! Throwing now, Peterman on first down. Behind time is left. And he's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. times and their many chances thus far. This time it's third and three. They run with their short yardage man, Ivory. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Here's John Ryan now, standing right on his own five-yard line. That's pulled in at the 32. That'll wind up being a 50-yard punt, though they do get 10 back on the return. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? Well, we're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 42. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Dixon. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, 
it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. A tackle of almost on the spot, that means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game down. for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So after the penalty, here's second and three. Here's Collins. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Looking for two yards here on third down. Flacco drops it underneath to Dixon. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Flacco now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. First and ten here for Flacco. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. Holding offense. Uh, he's trying to protect his quarterback's blind side. Got nabbed for the hole. You have one job over there. Make sure that man does not get hit. So if you have to hold occasionally, do so, because they don't catch all of them. This time they did. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Flacco from the gun. He's going to look deep down the field. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Trent Murphy in there to get him for a loss of five. Murphy, Charles missed all of last year with that knee injury. Says he feels healthy. He sure looked healthy there. Had nine sacks in his last full season in 2016. Can also cover people out of the backfield when they run pass routes. Trent Murphy's an excellent addition. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. Flacco. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he's got some space here. 
The screen does get him nine, but it also brings up a fourth down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. take over. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again, so it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Peterman back into his end zone. He's got his man on the crossing road. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was, because that's all defenses talk about getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Field at the 49 yard line. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. of two now third down now obviously that's some good work there defensively being able to stop them and bring it up the key third down but if you're on the offensive side of the ball there's an opportunity because i know what defensive guys are thinking right now to stop them get to the ball that means they might not be sound defensively there could be some opportunities and you said key third down highlight that word put it in bold here we go in need of a conversion on third down they had the big play to start the drive not much sense from the gun, it's Peterman. And that is incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Joe Flacco in the offense heading back out onto the field. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, he, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella. Because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up and they tend to play well. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at about the 32. On first down, Flacco. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Second and ten, Flacco once more. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Set. Ready. Set. Operating off play action, Flacco. And able to find John Brown. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down. Spectacular catch turns into... A first down. First down saves him from a three and out. right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Flacco to throw again on second down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Flacco will take to the air again. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Peterman and the Bills come up now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here we go now. Ah! On first down, Peterman. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. 
you never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Here we go now. Three, 19. Ah! Now Peterman on second down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. Four down, four down. Set! Green, 39! Peterman. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fielded at the 33. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. After some early struggles running the ball, they've really picked it up. But early it just seemed like there were no holes there. Now all of a sudden, the holes seem to be there. I don't know if that's just my imagination. And give them credit that they kept their confidence. Because sometimes when you get stuffed big in the running game, early especially for an entire half it really makes you retreat a little bit but not this group they always have the confidence that we just get their assignments down they get in sync with their runners and off they went they've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten they look to throw on first and ten with Flacco throw left side complete it's Dixon 16 yards on that one and a Raven first So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Absolute mess. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Incomplete on first down. Now Flacco on second. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. He lost two there. And it's third down. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Pass 
possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. And again, it's Flacco to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Andrews. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. And that's exactly why the Ravens drafted him, added him to their stable after drafting Hayden Hurst in the first round. A second tight end who can catch the football. He looks like a guy who's going to line up on the line of scrimmage and mash you in the running game as a blocker. But his best attributes, splitting out, catching the football, almost as an extra wide receiver. Flacco. And he is caught. It's Palmer. And he doesn't quite make it. They do stop him. But he gets it all the way down to the one. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in the balance. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need a touchdown and the PAT for the lead. Trying to punch it in with Collins. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Alex Collins taking it in from a yard out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from taking the lead. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? Critical extra point up and good. And that is going to put him on top by a point, and it sets us up for quite a finish. That time, a six-play drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Here's Taiwan Jones on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And here come the Bills. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. second down two minute drills they're tough enough pressure packed enough and these elements makes it significantly tougher and you don't have the margin where you can say okay I can allow for certain things and maybe change up a little bit because it's a two minute situation you've got to try and make the same plays you would make if the elements didn't exist he's back to throw Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. Now a first down carry here from McCoy. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They'll go again to McCoy. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. And now maybe.
maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As it comes with a minute 15 left to go in the second half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. They'll look to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. And before this fourth and three play, we're going to get whistles and a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Here we go now. Back to throw. And he's got his man, it's the tight end play. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Back to throw. Oh, there's that man again, it's complete. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Hang on now. Blue lining. Blue lining. Ah! Now a 20th carry here from the corner. And now the Ravens are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. Peterman. Man open right side. It's the tight end play. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. comes Peterman in the offense first and ten and he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive all right here we go green 39 green 39 Peterman the throw and he'll check this one down to McCoy and taking it to the 15 yard line before he's brought down the Bills passing game getting him down the field they've got another first down and he spikes it with just a shade under a half a minute left. 29 seconds on the clock.
McCoy. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. <laughs> Got a quick flash about being in their huddle. Whatever the play call was, it was tagged with these words. Make sure you stay in the middle of the field. That's where we want to be. And he did just that. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goal post. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So in a driving rain, he steps up, puts it through, just like he's practicing in a gym somewhere. How about that? Any little slip in this weather is going to throw him off. He stepped up there like it was perfect conditions, took dead aim, and knocked it through. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. One last gasp for Flacco. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 15. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.